and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. That's enough of that video. Okay. Probably you may think it's quite irrelevant, irrelevant to our Gospel reading today. But we will soon find the link. Today is uh, the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of Mestra. And the gospel reading is from Tony? St. Mark, chapter 13, exactly. And uh, during the gospel, we heard the Lord saying this verse Watch therefore, for you do not know. When the master of the house is coming. What does that mean? Who is the master of the house? The master of the house is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's talking about his second coming at the end of times. And he is asking us to do what? To watch. Watch therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming. Watch means be ready and be prepared. When he comes uh, at the end of times, we should be meeting him with joyful uh, oil just like whom just like the five wise virgins do you remember who entered with the lord into the heavenly wedding so this is what the lord meant by this verse saint mark chapter 13 let me ask you why should i be watching why should i be prepared and how this is what we need to discuss in the next few minutes. And I believe this was the theme of this year's festival, correct? The Mahragan al Kiraza. Be prepared, be ready, correct? Exactly, be ready. Be ready for his second coming because his second coming might happen at any time. So what are the three reasons or the main three reasons why we should be prepared? Number one. Our teacher, St. Peter, in his first epistle, chapter 5, verse 8, he says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Again, I believe we all remember this verse, and probably most of us keep it by heart. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter 5.8 Our enemy the devil is like a vicious beast. He is seeking the children of Christ in order to devour without any mercy. Have you seen this video? Do you remember the oxen? The big ox? He is very powerful, very strong. He has sharp horns, and it probably weighs three lions together. But who won at the end? The lions. And why did the lions manage to knock him down, to defeat him? Was it because of their power or trickery? Because of whose foolishness? Because of the foolishness of that oxen. Why? What was wrong? What did he do wrong? He what? Okay, he did two things that were wrong. The first, he was running at the rear end of the flock, at the cattle flock. He was at the very rear end of the cattle flock. And that's why he exposed himself to the attacks of the lions. This was number one. Number two, instead of calling other members of the, of the flock to help him, what did he do? He left the flock completely. He got distracted and exhausted. He was almost drained. So instead of calling for help, help me, come help me to defeat these little lions, he left the flock completely. And by this, he was defeated. He was devoured without mercy. Have you seen this? Well, the flock actually is our church. This is our church. And by choosing to be at the very end of the church, out of laziness, out of boredom, or reluctance to keep up your spiritual canon, 
you are exposing yourself to the attacks of the devils. They get you easily, they distract you, they drain you. So we have to be on top of everything always. We have to choose the first seat to sit and to participate in all the prayers. And we have to keep praying and reading the gospel and, and uh, fasting when, even when we are home. But if you are reluctant to do this, you are going to be at the rear, just like this oxen. And you will be exposed to the attacks of the vicious lions. And at, at a certain point, you might think, oh, I'm going to be able to defeat them by myself. You might be eluded by your own power to fight the devils without help. And by doing this, we are giving the devil the best chance to destroy us completely. So this is the first thing, why we should be sober, why we should be vigilant. Be sober and be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Our enemy is very strong, is very smart. We cannot defeat him with our own weakness, but we have to stick to the church we have to stick to God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and be with him at all times in order to be able to defeat. Because who is stronger, me or the devil or the Lord Jesus Christ? The Lord Jesus Christ. So if I am with him, I'm going to win with his power, not with mine. This is number one. Why we should be watching. Number two, we should be watching because as St. Paul said in Ephesians 5, 16, chapter 5, verse 16, he said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. What does that mean that the days are evil? As a matter of fact, let me not spend a lot of time. Time is probably one of the most precious gifts the Lord or God has given to each and every one of us. And that's why it is called the present. Time is the most precious gift we have. Time is our life. If you spend an hour or a day or a week, what is it that you're spending? This is our life. Time out of our life. But because unfortunately we get it for free, do you pay anything to get this time, to purchase this gift? We don't pay anything. We get it for free and that's why we spend it we waste it unwisely. We may spend hours and hours watching TV shows or playing games or following social media. This is what we are doing. If you counted how much time you're spending every day or every week doing such matters, you'll find it the big bulk of your time watching TV shows, playing games, or following the social media. Well, this time could have been wisely dedicated to other matters. Like what? Like studying. Like working out. You can work out and be healthy. You can probably uh, worship. Also, we can spend this time together as a family, quality time, or having fun by any other means. But we don't do any such thing. Let me ask you a question. As we just said at the beginning, time is probably one of the most precious gifts God has ever given to any one of us. Let me ask you, if an important guest came to your house and he rang the bell or knocked the door, while you were very busy doing other stuff, you were watching, you were playing, and you did not have any time to open the door or to respond to the door, uh, to the ring bell. This very important guest has come with a very precious gift, with a treasure for you. What would this guest do? Would he be waiting and waiting? Would he keep knocking and ringing? Or eventually, at a, after a certain point of, in time, he's going to leave looking for someone else worthy to receive that gift. And this is what's going what's, what's to happen when the Lord comes at the end of times. He is knocking on the doors of our hearts. He wants to be invited in our lives. But we are so busy doing other matters. 
we are not actually attentive to God. And at a certain point, when the end comes, he will leave, looking for someone else worthy to receive his blessings and his heavenly kingdom. So, why should we be watchful? Number one, because our adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. This is number one. Number two, because the days are evil. Redeeming times because the days are evil. We have to be very watchful. Okay. Uh, let me tell you a story about an old monk. Our fathers and grandfathers, the monks, were very vigilant. And they were quite aware of the value of time. Once upon a time, there was an old monk who spent like 70 years of his life in worshipping asceticism. He was very, very strong in his spiritual struggle. And because of this, the devil got envious. The devil become, became jealous. So the devil tried to trick him. What did he do? He disguised the devil, disguised in the image of an angel, and went to this monk and told him, Oh, my father, I am bringing glad tidings to you. And then the monk drew the sign of the cross and said, What is it? He said to him, You're going to live for 50 more years. So do not exhaust yourself in worshipping and asceticism because you still have plenty of time. So take it easy on yourself. The Lord sent me with this message. You're going to live 50 more years. So you have to be very joyful and take it easy on yourself. You don't really have to pray all the time. You don't really have to worship and fast all the time. Take it easy because of your health. But what did this monk do? Was he joyful with that message? Did he say, oh, you have a point, you are right? No, he said something totally different. And the devil really got confused and puzzled by this. He told the devil, do you call this glad tidings? I thought that I was about to live for a hundred more years and now you come to me telling it's only 50? I have to work even harder. I have to worship my God even more in order to save the time because the days are evil. And by this, the devil was defeated innocently and disappeared. And surprisingly, when we hear that story, when did this monk die actually? When did he depart? Did he depart after 10 years? After 50 years? After 100 years? How long after? Huh? Do you remember? Does anyone remember? Huh? He departed on that same year. On that same year, he departed. And that's why the days are evil. You can never be deceived by the trickery of the devil telling you you have plenty of time. You're still young. You're so healthy. Enjoy your life. Why wasting time worshipping or probably spending some time with your family or uh, doing any other kinds of stuff? Just enjoy and you have plenty of time. You never know. The days are evil. We can never tell that we have plenty of time. Okay? Number three. For you do not know when the time is. And this is the verse we heard today during the reading. Mark 13, 33. For you do not know when the time is. Number one, our enemy is a vicious beast, is a roaring lion. Number two, the days are evil. And number three, we do not know when the Lord is coming. He might probably come while we are here together at church. We might find him coming on the clouds right now. And probably we might spend thousands and thousands of years until his second coming. Does anyone know? Nobody knows. And that's why we have to be watchful and ready all the time. Why did not Jesus tell his disciples about the date of his second coming? Why did he not tell them? Why? He could have told them. Yes. Okay, exactly. Let me give you an example. Yes, Cyril. 
He wanted them to have faith and to be prepared all the time. If you went to school uh, the first day and then the teacher said, well, as a matter of fact, you have a test after six months. You have a test after six months. Until then, you're not having any tests or exams or quizzes or whatsoever. What would you do? Are you going to go home and study hard for six long months in order to be prepared for that test? No. Certainly not. We're going to go home and start having fun and enjoy our lives and do whatever we please for more than five months, probably for seven months. And then when the time is due, we will have to be prepared in like a couple of days. We might be able to be prepared or we may not. And at this point, actually, you, your success is very likely to be hard. You may not even uh, pass. Exactly. Because you're not well prepared. Correct? Yes. What is it that I've said? Prepared for what? Okay. So you have to be prepared. Be prepared. Sit. Sit up. Thank you. Okay. And that's why the Lord did not reveal the time of His second coming. He created us to live with Him. A life of purity. A life of righteousness. To be a source of goodness. To be a source of charity to everyone. Not just to have fun, be selfish and live our own lives. Until the, ta the time of His coming. And by this, uh, we are not going to be ready. Uh, and that's why the, at the very end, he said, Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Truly, he will make him ruler over all that he has. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.